somebody can purchase it and convert it to the, whatever use they have. So again, we need to identify some of these wetlands and protect them. So for the methodology and approach especially, let me mention again, we have a very strong methodology already in place, but what we are missing is the link between the technicians or the technologists or the analysts to the users. So for us, we like to involve a lot of stakeholders, especially in user needs assessment. We want to understand what exactly would you like us to do? What exactly would you like to see the program achieve for you as a country? We are not talking now as individuals, but as a country. If there is a wetland that you feel that is in Mombasa and it is important and you like it to be protected and you like us to get statistics and analyze it for you as a country, you bring that particular uh, request to us and we'll put that into consideration. So mapping national wetlands of importance using freely available EO data. Again, like I've said, we have numerous data sets here. I think when you'll be having the tour, Mr. Teddy will take you to, uh, to the receiver as well as the e-station that allows us to receive lots of information for us to process and be able to, to get some of this data. So other activities that we've conducted are shown in some of the clips as well as field activities just to get an understanding of how the picture is in some of the countries that we'll be implementing. So again, for each, for each identified wetland, we'll conduct a comprehensive inventory of all the aspects that is required for us. There are other items that we may not be able to do or they might be beyond the scope of this particular program, but that again gives the country an opportunity to expand on whatever information we have gathered for you to continue updating uh, for the benefit of uh, uh, be benefit of the country. So change detection statistics as well as all the related information that you need, images, uh, field validation activities are all pegged on here and you should be able to receive them on need basis. So eventually these are some of the products that uh, we we'll wish to offer to the country, status maps, change maps, transitions, statistics, as well as methodology and modeling tools. Uh, right now, we are, we are using two methods, object-oriented as well as uh, uh, the digital art platform, uh, which help us to, to, to reduce the amount of time that we are previously using to conduct some of the activities. So we are hoping uh, as we continue engaging, we should be able to do probably more, pro probably from this particular session, there are better methods that we can also adopt. So for the value addition, um, there is a lot of participatory ground truthing uh, together. Of course, this has to be done together with our partners in the countries. For this case, DRSRS or any other that will sign up later. The capacity building, which is already being handled by Makerere University, they have a, a comprehensive program that they will be offering in this. But again, this doesn't stop you from coming up with an area that you're interested in and you'd like to be trained on. You can just again forward the request. We shall pass the information to them for them to be able to, to do the training for us. So involvement of uh, institutions that manage natural resources, of course, being here, that means you, have, you are a stakeholder in natural resources, as well as we have to target the policy makers and decision makers. When Googie was doing the presentation, he talked about the conference of ministers that is to take place from 22nd in November, I believe, 22nd November. Uh, that is the kind of level that we will start the engagement and of course we have to cascade it down to whatever policy makers we have. Uh, this is a product that emanated from cross fertilization and synergizing with other projects. It's a product from uh, Digital Earth Africa showing the 2017 and 2021 as well as the uh, NDTI, that is the Normalized Difference Stability Index for Lake Baringo. Uh, just to show clarity of, that is the optical clarity of, of water. Um, there are more that we are doing in this particular front. Uh, while the Digital Earth Africa is, has the capability of doing a number, uh, the program doesn't require everything. So 
we can only choose as per the country, as per the interest of the country, then we can be able to, to do the same for, for, for you. Then the trans, uh, other synergies and areas of uh, interest that we've done across the continent with other implementing partners. We have the CSC. CSC is based in, uh, in Senegal as well. SALSCAL is based in South Africa. We are closely working together with them to, to form some sort of a consortia, a small consortia, to look into wetland monitoring. Then we've trained a lot of other people using the Digital Earth Africa, uh, Digital Earth Africa uh, platform on wetland monitoring, as well as the Biopharma collaboration that I think probably most of you have already applied and you, you'll be participating in it. Uh, other than that, we have the, the, no, uh, the knowledge uh, management platform that all the information that is coming from here will be deposited within the AUC. So later in the future, maybe a year from now, the trainings that you, have, you may have undertaken, you can also find them within the AUC platform for, for the future reference as well. So another value addition here is a number of workshops already held, both regional, um, uh, when the guest of honor was giving his keynote, he mentioned about the, the most recent one that we did in Kampala. It was also in this particular front, just to make sure that each and every person is involved. It was also opened by a minister of Karomoja Affairs uh, from Uganda. So users and decision makers uptake, of course, this is still our main, main, main um, um, goal, that we have to synthesize all this information to a one-pager for whatever policymaker to easily take and, and understand. So for it, we are having some sort of uh, a way in which we'd like to conduct, just to make sure that the policymakers understand. So we need to sensitize the, the decision makers and use, uh, end users on wetlands, monitoring services through training and meetings, because most of us seems not to understand exactly the value of a wetland. So if you are asked either to set up a 20-story apartment in USA, eh? that's your piece of land, but it's a wetland. You've been offered a 20-story building, or you leave it as it is for the benefit of the community. Which one will you take? <laughs> so our, our work is not done yet here. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what is happening around Kiambu and so many very good re regions we are converting to 20-story buildings and forgetting that we need to eat, yes? But uh, yesterday I had, we, we have GMO now, so it will take care of that. Anyway, so we have incorporated end users in modifying services to suit their needs and organize decision makers workshop. This is exactly what we are doing right now. You've been convened here as end users so that you can modify our thoughts to suit your country's needs. Then conduct on-site hotspot evaluation with grassroots communities and decision makers. This is eventually will be done with our partners as well. Then open days with the decision makers and the end users. The last point is very important because that's where we bring a lot of people who do not understand anything related to EEO. They even don't understand what a wetland is. The only thing we need to make them understand is these particular areas are important. If you continue degrading them, then these are the repercussions. Then some of the, um, those are gender issues. Let me just speak a little bit about gender. Gender is a little bit wide nowadays. We include equality, disability, social inclusion as well. So uh, I think it's, you asked about the question on how we like to integrate the gender-related issues. So we've taken it a little bit broader. So geographical area, that's something related to gender right now. So we don't want only people from Nairobi to tell us about issues of wetlands in Mombasa. We like to get information about issues of wetlands in Mombasa by people from Mombasa, as well as Kwale, Migori, Kisumu, KC, ETC, ETC, okay? So that's an aspect. Geographical representation is an aspect of gender. So within the group, 
you can see a little bit inside here, we are 40, 60 maybe, so the ladies take it. And then about people with disability, how do they come into play, especially in this particular program? Our other, uh, the previous manager was a person living with a disability, so that was a component. So within the team, the team that is implementing this particular project, 30% are already ladies, uh, but we are trying to improve that even a little bit further because uh, that doesn't meet the Kenyan criteria. But again, within the AUC criteria, we've actually met or even surpassed that particular part. So we already have a agenda policy in place, which we are still going to, to improve, but it cuts across all the gender-related issues that will be uh, taken, uh, that will be taking place with this, this particular program. Then uh, some commitment as proposed in some awards earmarked for the private sector. This one is for the guys who have already been awarded or will be awarded later uh, under the private sector. I think when the call will be up, please look out if you are capable or if you are eligible as well, you can also apply and participate in some of the, our private sector activities. Some of the challenges so far we've met is most of the countries do not have um, some sort of policies, especially the, 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 the enforcement part is a little bit weak, which we, we are still crying again if we could also, if some of the aspects that will come out of here will help enforce or rather strengthen the enforcement part, we'll be very happy. Then the wetlands boundaries. We do not know how big our wetlands are. We have the ones that are gazetted, that's very nicely done. But again, why are people encroaching into them? Because of that link, that weak part. How is Nairobi done, by the way? It's Nairobi's done, yes? Okay, is there, or the question is, is there a dam? Oh, it's no longer there. The last time we were doing the analysis, I saw cows grazing on top of it and asked myself, cows on water? This should be a miracle. I should record this. <laughs> so, anyway. so those are some of the aspects that we have to look at and talk about them. And we have to be a little bit brave and talk about them because who else will talk about them if not us? So lack, with, uh, lack of adequate capacity, institutional level in data transformation to decision ready information. Uh, we normally say analysis ready data to decision ready data. Now we are talking about wisdom. So after you have analysis ready data, you have decision ready data for you, then the wisdom of the policy makers is now what we are looking for, using the same data sets. So for the way forward, we like to in include grassroots communities in policy discussions and benefits of wetland management progress. Please, for the guys involved in this, just don't post it in newspaper and say it is out there. Let's see how many people are going to read for us to change this policy. Is it possible to go a little bit lower and have a chat with them to see if that can also be a possibility? Because it is them who live close to the wetlands. So sensitize wetland management authorities on the need to quantify the monitoring aspect of wetlands, understand drivers for change, borrow and exchange experiences in methodologies with SASCAL as well as CSE for cost fertilization, investigation of uh, rising water levels in lakes. Uh, let me just mention here that it's not only within Afri Kenya, but the whole Rift Valley, all the way from Jordan to Mozambique the lakes are rising. Uh, and it's not only Victoria or Baringo, or we have lakes in, 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 in Ethiopia, uh, we have lakes in Mozambique as well that are rising. So some of the work that we do will feed into the continental aspect of understanding the rising water levels. Then continuously involve the private sector, formulating policy briefs, as well as for the guidelines for the wise use of wetlands. So opening more opportunity for inclusivity, we are all here, you're also welcome. If you like to participate in some of the activities, we have our implementing partner in DRSRS, please, you are free to contact them and see how much you can be involved. 
research institutions, the knowledge management groups and platforms. Already we are closely working with AU as well as other institutions like Makerere University. Involving women and youth, students' innovation utilizing of EO, uh, there will be a call again to support uh, students either in MSc, on PhD, on areas of, uh, uh, of research to better improve uh, utilization of data as well as improve their knowledge. Creating more roles for private sector, not only in tools development, but also in development of policy and policy guidelines as well. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, David Donko. Another applause of my hand, please. I know the wetland uh, is a, it's a major issue in the country, and um, as I we had agreed, uh, we'll have to create some more time so that we can uh, uh, present your reactions. And that's why I was requesting that uh, if you are in agreement, we can push them to afternoon after our lunch. Um, just a few announcements. We have uh, we'll be having our lunch. Uh, third floor where we had uh, breakfast this morning and for those of you who are new at RCMRD uh, maybe you want to use the washrooms I think all the floors are uh, service for the washrooms if I'm not wrong <laughs> David yes for each floor yes we have ladies on the other end yes and gentlemen on this other side yes yeah. I don't know I don't know if you have a smoking zone I don't know you do, I don't think you have one Anyone who wants to smoke today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, uh, we have come to the end of our morning session. Uh, we'll be convening again at, uh, I think, 2.15 will be sufficient enough because we have actually delayed a little bit. So, you can keep your reactions so that uh, once we resume in the afternoon, we'll be able to present them to David. Otherwise, thank you very much for your patience and also for being keen listeners. Karibuni. <laughs>